Well, it's just like I was telling you. We were swinging around this hill, mopping up after the first wave. The Heinies were throwing everything but Ma's kitchen stove at us. And the lieutenant sent me on a reconnaissance job down this road. when this Heine comes along. We see each other about the same time and we both hit the dirt fast. I fall with my rifle under me. Well, I know that if this guy throws anything, it ain't going to be a cream puff. Here I am, trying to scrape the mud off my rifle. I'm thinking about the skipper and how he'd give me hell for falling on it when all of a sudden... They know what they're talking about when they tell you to keep your rifle out of the mud and how to keep it up when you fall. I got off lucky that time. The hiney must have been scared and pitched a wild ball, but the concussion knocked me cold. I guess he thought I was dead. Ma wrote me that you joined up, and it made me feel kind of proud, kid. But I want a live soldier for a brother, not a dead one. That's why I'm telling you this stuff. You take that rifle I give you. It's a honey. It's a killer. If you use it right and treat it right, you've got the best friend a soldier can have. But if you don't know how to handle it, or if you start kicking it around, it's going to let you down just when you need it plenty. I remember when I was in the replacement center. They gave me a rifle. So what? You point the damn thing, and it goes bang, and that's all there is to it. It gave me a pain the way the non-coms used to hammer away on this preliminary stuff. I wanted to get out and kill some Germans and Japs. Take this blindfold business. I used to think that was kid stuff, like riding a bike with no hands. I found out. We were in rest billets one night, and I was cleaning my rifle after two days of pretty tough going. So I said to the Sarge, Sarge, I don't like drinking out of a river, but that canteen of mine just won't hold enough water. You'd think that would have shut him up, but it didn't. No wonder you had a bellyache last night. I wish I could get this damn thing back together. Here she comes. There she went. Okay, you guys, on your feet, outside. Tell yourself that light. Yeah, we were moving out, and me with the guts of my rifle all over the bench. So you see, that blindfold business wasn't kid stuff. There's a reason for everything in the Army. You gotta know how to fall with a rifle. downright to keep it clean. Those things aren't just something else to learn. They're how to save your life. Now you take Joe, for instance. Joe's a swell guy, field artillery. He was telling me one time. Yeah, I was telling him one time. I was telling him what a damn fool I am. I'm Joe, field artillery. And there's our battery. We were sitting pretty and getting ready to go into action. Then this German plane comes along and spots us. 
Well, all hell breaks loose up and down the front. And right off the bat, we get orders to load up and move. First, I couldn't find my gas mask. Like a dope, I'd put it down someplace. You know the place. Naturally, the guys all laugh, and I'm mad as hell. The sergeant don't help any. First thing he says is clean up that rifle. Not, how are you, Joe, or did you hurt yourself? Just clean up that rifle. Clean up my rifle, he says, and me with mud running out of my ears. The hell with that. So anyway, we get the battery into the new position. wishing I was back in Chicago when I hear a noise. Three heinies out on patrol. There they were, like ducks in a shooting gallery. Somehow they'd wriggle through the line, but now I had them where I wanted them. Boy, did I have them. One, two, three. That's what I figured. I picked the second one for the next plug, only I never got him. See why? That's a pretty looking mess, isn't it? I know what the sergeant was talking about now. I never would have gotten out of that spot alive if our machine guns hadn't cut the tails off those monkeys. I want you to be smart, kid. Not like Joe and me. If I'd have been half smart, I wouldn't be writing you from here. I'd be up with my outfit where I belong. Here's what happened. The sergeant had rolled me out at 5 o'clock in the morning for guard duty. It's cold and rainy and half dark, and I'm a pretty unhappy guy. I knew that rain wasn't doing my rifle any good. I got to thinking about Joe and how he snafu'd his detail. And I figured I'm not going to get caught that way. So I get out some oil. Pour it down the barrel. Then I plugged her up to keep the oil inside.
Okay, I guess you're ahead of me right now. But here's how it was. I'd been out there a long time, and I was getting pooped. I was beginning to think those guys would never come out to relieve me. Okay, Hennessy, go back and get yourself some Java. And get dried off. You know, Corporal, what this outfit needs is an all-night dog leg. Go on. Fresh air's good for a guy like you. Yeah, I know. Make a man out of it. It's a 109. Let him have it. I'd seen one of those Messerschmitts tear hell out of B Company. I drew a bead and tracked him. The plug in my barrel? Hell, I forgot about that. This was the long shot that might pay off. Squeeze the trigger like they told you. Slow. Don't jerk. That's it. Jeez. Look at that rifle. Look at that face. Sensor bear! Well, kid, I guess you're not so proud of your big brother now. I guess you think I'm pretty much of a dope. Okay, so I'm a dope. The point is, let's not have two of them in the family. It's so simple, kid, that I want to holler it at you. Just keep your rifle clean and use it right. If you do, you've got a great chance. But if you don't... I don't know what I'm going to look like. They don't take the bandages off till tomorrow. But we got to keep one guy in this family that the gals will go for. Well, so long, kid. Good luck. Keep your rifle clean. <laughs>